This is the new Mackie Thump Sub Go. It's a dual 8 inch, 400 watt peak, battery powered subwoofer, the low end counterpart of the Thump Go series. It's designed for use both upright in what they're calling briefcase mode, as well as on its side horizontally, exposing the threaded M20 pole adapter. You can also ground stack multiple Thump Sub Goes for a club style system. Mackie was kind enough to send out a pair of Thump Sub Goes for me to test and review prior to the product announcement. They did not get to see this video before I posted it. Every ounce of praise and constructive criticism that I have to give takes this creative liberty into consideration. Now the Thump Sub Goes are Bluetooth equipped, and along with this product release, there will be a firmware update for the Thump Go top speakers which send the Bluetooth signal through the XLR output. Save it to say, there's a lot of ways to configure this system. For professional work, I always prefer a hardwired XLR connection, but it's great having Bluetooth there as a convenience feature and for casual, non-mission critical listening. This might be a controversial take, but I actually don't think the Thump Sub Goes need Bluetooth. Unless your top speaker doesn't have Bluetooth, it's a bit of a redundancy. Certainly nice to have though, since you can Bluetooth into the sub and daisy chain the top, or Bluetooth into the top and daisy chain the sub. This system gives you a lot of flexibility. It's also worth noting that wireless Bluetooth linking between boxes is only available on the Thumbco tops as a stereo pair. The Bluetooth on the sub is only for streaming directly in. There's no wireless linking capability between top and sub, or between sub and sub. That connection has to be made with an XLR cable. So if you're wanting to do a stereo pair over Bluetooth, just plan to update your thump goes, link them via Bluetooth like normal, then daisy chain the thump sub goes via XLR. On the mixer panel, you're gonna find four buttons. A high pass switch, which activates a 130 Hz crossover, front LED control, phase inversion, and a stereo mono switch. Let's jump right in and take a listen to the Thump Sub Go and compare it to the Thump Goes by themselves. The audio recorder is placed about 20 feet back just beneath the camera, and the Thump Goes were on full range mode the entire time. Headphones are recommended.
world is ringing. As you can hear, the Thump Sub Goes add some much needed low end punch to this battery powered system. All we're missing from this mountaintop rave is some friends, some drinks, and some battery powered lights. Speaking of batteries, the GB200s powering the Thump Sub Go are hot swappable, so you can swap batteries live without any downtime. They're also substantially bigger than the GB100 batteries used in the Thump Go, so you won't be able to mix and match them. The Thump Sub Go includes one battery, which is advertised for up to 6 hours of use, and up to 12 hours with the optional second battery. Of course, I think your actual battery life will vary depending on usage. The second battery does add some weight too, but all in all, carrying the Thump Sub Go feels about like moving around your average 40-50 to 50 pound top speaker. I actually couldn't drive all the way into the test site, so I had to hike all the equipment and the Thump Sub Goes in over some terrain. And it was doable, one at a time. They're right at that weight where you're not going to want to carry both at once though. They do fit nicely into a collapsible wagon as well for an ultra portable, battery powered top and sub system that's ready to go almost anywhere. As far as what crowd size these would be appropriate for, anywhere you can use a Thump Go, you could benefit from adding a Thump Sub Go to the equation. We use Thump Goes all the time as fill speakers, wedding ceremony speakers, and DJ booth monitors. Since these are dual 8 inch drivers, and the Thump Go has an 8 inch driver, it's almost like having a Thump Go with 3 8 inch drivers inside. Except, maybe even a little better, since they're in a dedicated enclosure that sits at ground level. The Thump Sub Go is rated to hit 32Hz at negative 10dB and 39Hz at negative 3dB. In my testing at full volume, I actually found the Thump Sub Go was capable of hitting even lower than that, moving a substantial amount of air at 29Hz. That is very loud. Let's go ahead and throw 25Hz in here at full volume just to show that it is capable. Whether or not this range is musically useful, the spec sheet seems to indicate not, but you still feel it in your chest and hear it, so I'm counting this as a win, as the only real competitor battery powered sub that's out right now is advertising 42 hertz at lowest. Alright, back in the shop now, and I want to address one of the downsides of the Thump Sub Go that I noticed. Now for reference, I have about 13 years of experience with Pro Audio, so this is something that caught my attention during the testing period, and rather than tell you about it, I actually want to show you. So what we're going to do is run a 39Hz tone generator through the subs at full volume. Let's go ahead and start that. And what we're going to do is rapidly lower the volume from full to half. And what you're going to hear is the volume level will drop, but then it will go back up on its own. Let's take a listen. This also works in the reverse. When you go from half to full, you're going to hear it go up and then back down. Let's do this one more time. We'll go from full to half. Really good example right there. It goes down to half, the volume level dips down, but then it comes back up by itself. Let's go one more time from half to full. Did you hear that little burst of loud before it reduced itself? Let's do it one more time. Another really good example right there. It dips way down and then it comes back up by itself. Now what I think is happening here is that there's a bit of optimization happening within the DSP of the sub that is limiting how much output can come through this box. Now we have to keep in mind that this is a dual 8 inch subwoofer and it's battery powered. There is a limit on how much bass can be produced before those drivers are overexerting themselves. So to an extent this optimization is necessary in order to get the best performance out of the Thump Sub Go without clipping or distorting. This is good for efficiency, especially considering that it's a battery powered sub. However, if you're trying to dial in a really specific EQ setting, it's a little bit difficult when the levels are changing without any input from you, the user. It seems to be most noticeable with the lower frequencies and with the gain knob turned all the way up. However, don't let this dissuade you too much because this is something that could easily be changed with a future firmware update. I also noticed that the Thump Sub Go front grille does seem to be a little bit more flexible than the front grille on the Thump Go. It's still more than enough to protect the drivers, 
Unfortunately, one of the thump sub goes arrived with dents in the grill due to it being delivered upside down. I did mention this to Mackie, and they passed it along to their quality control team to see about adding more protective packaging so that this doesn't happen in the future. Now one of the other small downsides I noticed is I do think I hear a little bit of port noise happening, which if you're not familiar, port noise is basically just turbulent air breaking apart as it enters and exits the enclosure rapidly. And I do think I'm hearing just a little bit of that, so let's go ahead and demonstrate this full volume at 39 hertz. You can kind of hear a little subtle rattle. But I will say that that goes away as soon as you have a top speaker running with these. I don't hear the port noise really at all. In a real world practical configuration, you're never gonna be running just a sub with no top. So it's really not something to be hugely worried about. However, I would recommend taking the marketing sticker off of your grill so that as much air can get in and out as possible. I am not implying poor design here, but I do think that this is a trade-off in exchange for the compact size of this battery powered sub. Overall, I think the Thump Sub Go is the perfect low-end companion for the Thump Go. Battery-powered top speakers have revolutionized the convenience and flexibility of the pro audio world. Now, we're watching it happen in real time as that same technology is being implemented into the low-frequency realm.